Give God a praise right there. Come on, give God praise. If you know what it's like to be weak and to be without strength and to just press into God and then all of a sudden you feel better. The situation hasn't changed. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to preach in a minute. But this moment right here is for people like me who have felt like giving up. Felt like throwing in the towel. Tired of giving and not receiving. Come on, there ought to be at least 17 people in the room right now. That just this week you contemplated quitting. Just this week you thought about suicide. Just this week you thought about how much better life would be if you were not around. And God, here it is, the Spirit of God is in the room to remind you that when you are weak, then am I strong. When, when you have reached the end of your rope, you have not reached the end. I'm not trying to make anybody excited, but I am trying to make you encouraged. And I just need about seven people to stand up on your feet and start clapping your hands till you feel like moving on. Start clapping your hands till you feel like going another round. Start clapping your hands until you feel like things have got to get better. I just need somebody that feels like me in the room. Just, just, just a handful of people. It ain't got to be everybody. But somebody who has reached a point in your life that you say, even if I'm going out, I'm not going out without a fight 
even if I'm going down, even if I'm not going to make it, I'm going to fight until I can't fight no more. Come on, I need somebody in here that will testify. And the reason the world thinks I won't survive is because they can't see my strength. He, he's but I've got somebody who speaks to me in the midnight hour, who encourages me when I've been deserted, who provides for me when my money gets low. Come on, somebody just give them a praise right through there. God, I thank you that when I was about to give up, you stepped up and made a way out of You are the source of my Yes, I'm, I'm going to be done in just a minute because I got to get this word out. I can't skip over it, but I need this moment to mean something for somebody that was thinking about giving up. And God is saying to you right now, keep on fighting. Keep being encouraged. Don't quit prematurely. As a matter of fact, the thing that you've been waiting on is closer than you think. If you can press through this moment, if you can make it through this night, if you can get past this hurdle, then everything you've been waiting on God to do is just, come on, talk back to me, it's just on the other side, and so I need you to encourage yourself and say, self, we ain't gonna quit too soon, self, I'm not gonna let the devil rob me of what God has me, self, you will be encouraged, you will survive, you will continue to fight, you will worship your way through, you will pray until something happens, you will call on God until he answers, oh yes, hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. I know y'all didn't come for all of this, and maybe this is just for me, and if it is, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Every now and then, you got to tell yourself, I'm worth the fight. <laughs> I'm worth the I'm worth going through it. I'm, I'm worth not giving up. I'm, I'm worth the fight. Huh? After all the hell I've survived, you mean to tell me the devil gonna try to take me out with this season right here? Oh no, I'm worth it. I'm worth I'm worth the fight. I'm worth more. Yes. 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 <laughs> Is there anybody willing to testify you've been through worse? You've survived worse than this. Ain't no way in the world you're going to let this one take you out. Yes. 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 I got to get it out now because I ain't going to get it later. Yes. 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 Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Romans chapter 13. chapter 13 
Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Verse 2. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. Um, we started a Hot Topic series at the beginning at, at, on Easter. And uh, it's been kind of interrupted and broken. Today is the last part, part five of that Hot Topic series. I want to talk uh, around the subject of interaction with law enforcement. The title is Blue Lives Matter. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Blue Lives Matter. Um, I'll give you this disclaimer. This has been all day long um, the hardest, one of the hardest sermons I've ever had to preach. Um, just because I'm kind of disconnected from the sermon itself. So, you know, that's the only reason I'm preaching it is because the Lord told me to. Not because I want to. Especially with worship like this, we could just sit here and talk about how the Lord is able to make a way and just dance all around and go home. <laughs> but that's not my assignment today. When I was 16 years old, 16, 17, somewhere off in there. Um, I used to go to Stephen F. Austin High School on the west side of town. And they used to do these weird uh, parties in the middle of nowhere where everybody just pull up and turn the headlights on and pull the keg off the back of the truck and an instant party. They used to have toga parties. Now, I never wore a toga but I would go to the toga parties. My mama didn't know um, what I was doing, or maybe she did. Um, but every now and then, she would let me drive her RAV4. She had uh, she had a little RAV4. And one night, <coughs> I had gone to a toga party. And I was coming back from the west side to the east side of town. It may have been 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. I pull up to a traffic light, I'm in the right hand lane about to make a right turn and a police officer pulls up next to me. He, uh, I give him the downtown nod. You know, there's an uptown nod and then there's the downtown nod. And if you ever give an uptown nod downtown, don't be mad when they treat you uptownish. Anyway, so I gave him the downtown nod, and he gave it back, and I thought it was all good. When I began to turn, <laughs> he cut his lights on. Ooh. And <laughs> when he comes to the car, he immediately tells me to get out the car. He didn't ask for license, registration, none of that stuff. He tells me to get out the car, and so I get out the car. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm, um, well, maybe that was Maino Road. He tells me to put my hands on the car. And so here I am. I'm asking, what did I do? Shut up. And then he goes into kind of this long tirade of he's tired of all of y'all here and yada, 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 causing trouble, where you come from, where you going, where you get this car, this my mama car, whatever, shut up, you know. And there's this constant. So he goes in and he's called me a couple of <coughs> expletives. And um, at some point he father had recently been killed and he went into this you know he probably ain't got no daddy he don't know about you know all of this stuff and at that point something triggered in my mind and I said I'm going home um, and 
thought, how was I going to get out of this situation? I began to say to him, I saw your badge. I saw your badge number. And if you don't let me go, if I haven't done anything wrong, you know, I'm going to file a complaint, so on and so forth. So long story short, he lets me go. I get home. Um, I kind of tell my mom what has transpired. And from that day, I've had a deep distaste for police officers. I'm just being transparent with you, being honest. Um, I've, I've never, from that moment on, uh, really felt anything positive concerning police officers. I know police officers personally, and I love them as individuals. Uh, but there has been so much misconduct, so much injustice, so much abuse of power that I've seen and experienced even firsthand. I get pulled over like every other week. Uh, just cause, just cause. And the funniest thing is when I get pulled over and then the officer happens to know, oh, you're Pastor Free. Then now it's strange that you just pulled me over based off of a profile and I'm not that. But it happens all the time. Lyndall Jones says it's because I drive drug dealer cars. <laughs> I don't even know what that is because I've never gone to a car lot and said, can you point me to the drug dealer cars? A car is a car. <coughs> So you know that I'm only preaching this sermon because it's in the Bible. I have no interest in defending blue lives. I'm just keeping it 100. But I was convicted by the word of God. And I can tell by the way you're responding to the stuff that I'm saying that half of you don't really care for cops either. You've had negative experiences or you know individuals who have. You have watched through the media some very questionable and suspect shootings. And we went through that for a course of a couple of years. And then it got so bad that people literally started shooting the cops. So what does the word of God say about how we are to interact with law enforcement. They don't get no more abundant life than this. You had no idea you was coming to church to talk about this today. In Romans chapter 12, um, Paul is literally talking from the point, verse 17, he says, don't repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Don't take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, and I will repay. So it's almost poetic. For in chapter 13, for God to begin to describe his defense system, he says, I want you to be very careful that you don't try to defend yourself in the world. But I need you to understand that I love you enough to have created something to protect you. And he goes into this understanding of the authorities. Now, as far as authorities is concerned, it could deal with lawmakers. It could deal with those who are law enforcers. To Today I want to focus specifically on how we deal with the police. And the first thing that I want to tell you, here it is, is that law enforcement is ordained by God. I'm almost done preaching. This is going to be a real simple message. I told you I don't want to preach it. You don't want to hear it. So let's help each other out and get through it. Amen. Listen, law enforcement is ordained by God, regardless as to what you think about the police, regardless as to the experiences that you have had with law enforcement. If you got brothers who are falsely locked up for something that they did not do, none of that changes the fact that law enforcement was God. God's idea. When Paul talks about the authorities, he says they have been established by God. An establishment is the foundation of a thing. The idea, the creation of a police force originated, here it is, in the mind of God. That means when you have an issue with the authority, you have an issue with the God who instituted. Y'all are quiet in here. The reality is most of us call ourselves Christians. 
Christians, but you got a whole lot of dislike for the things that God created. Kept, come on, keep it 100. Anybody else in here real like me that tells, God, you do a lot of stuff I don't care for. You tell me to do a lot of stuff. I really, so I'm not a Christian because I like being a Christian. Anybody else in here? I'm a Christian because I need my soul saved. I'm a Christian because I need help in the time of storm. But that whole turn the other cheek stuff, God, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. I, I have no, God, that whole give you 10%, I don't like that. I need all my money. I need to run all. Come on, anybody else in here real enough to say sometimes God tells you to do some things, gives you some things that if you were God, if I was God, God, it wouldn't be that way. It would just be the way I want it to be. And that's why you is not God. It's poor grammar, but it's good preaching. Say to yourself, I is not God. See, some of you were uncomfortable. I is not God. And God's mind, here it is, is perfect. So much so that the Bible says his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are are not our thoughts. If you had a hundred years, you would have never thought of some police. But God is genius. And so from the foundations of the world, when he started seeing the wickedness of man, he said, no, nah, these people going to need some policing. They're going to need somebody who can keep them in order, keep them in line, get them together, help them get their life. And so here it is. We got to understand that the, uh, that the frustration, the animosity that we feel toward law enforcement officers really is animosity towards God. Because he says, I am the one that created them. And then watch this. I am the one that gave them the authority. You need to understand that when a police officer stops you or when you have interaction with them you are literally here's the part that messed me up in the text you are interacting with the servant of God men who may or not be saved women who may not even believe because they are law enforcement officers. You read it with me, didn't you? It says they are servants of God for your good. They are operating under God-given authority to fulfill an assignment that only God could give. And when I started reading that, I started understanding a little better. I, I said, man, you should have had more empathy all the while because you know what it's like to just be trying to serve the Lord and people People don't like you just because you serve in the Lord. At the end of the day, people are so ratchet and so wrong, so ridiculous and so out of order that I have learned that I can be your hero one day. But the moment of one decision trying to serve God can turn your hero into the devil. Y'all quiet in the mug right through there. And there are some police officers that all they really trying to do is do their job, trying to protect and serve, trying to keep it clean out here in these streets but you already have a disdain you already got a nasty taste in your mouth you already can't stand them just because they wear the uniform just because they have the badge just because they have been given the authority but the thing that the text tells us you need to understand and I think police officers need to understand that they have delegated authority not absolute authority talk, talk back to me here they've got delegated authority not not divine authority. Now, there are some law enforcement officers that allow the badge and the gun to go to their head. They literally start acting like they are little gods, like they don't have to abide by any rules. But the reality of the text is that God says, the power that they have, I gave it to them because I am the ultimate authority. Any parents in here know what I'm talking about when you send your child and you say go tell your brother I say Micah go tell Caleb to come here and Micah goes up and says Caleb go downstairs and Caleb ain't listening because who is you you is just Micah and so he continues to play continues to do whatever he comes downstairs and like kids do he don't tell you that he gave a half well I told him and he ain't coming I said well you go tell your brother y'all know how I go that 
I said huh? he needs to come here and now there's a whole new swag because I got some delegated authority so up the steps I go daddy said you need y'all ain't talking back to me and so what the cops really need to understand huh, is yeah you went through training yeah you got the badge huh? yes you were deputized but at the end of the day huh, the only reason you are employed is because the God who is the ultimate authority decided to delegate you some authority it has been ordained by God it is here it is a gift from God and so I'm tripping I'm like God how in the world is something that can be so frustrating a gift you, you know I'm, I'm gonna be honest I, I've been struggling with, with, with these killing cops and, and I, I'm trying to understand God how in the world are you gonna tell me that this is a gift and then he says right here in the text that law enforcement is to produce the order of God it has been ordained by God it was the idea of God given the authority of God but watch this to produce the order of God as I was reading the text God put in my mind say man can you under can you can you imagine can you fathom how jacked up the world would be with no cop I, I need us to just live there for a moment. How, how, how terrible. I mean, you know how bad it is with cops. Can you imagine how thrown off, jacked up, literally hell on earth if there were nobody to police our behavior? Because here it is, in your heart, you're wicked. I know you don't like to hear it, but you are. You foul. You a sinner. You want to know how I know you are? Because I am. And I refuse to believe I'm all by myself. <laughs> Everybody in here has some wickedness. And you want to know how wicked you are? Just think about it. If you did not have cops and you wouldn't go to jail, how many people would you have killed already? Let's, let's just keep it 100. You didn't kill 76 people in your mind, and you know it. all night at the mall for the new Jays and then got to school and Jamal stepped on your shoes, you would have killed him. <laughs> Come on, keep it 100. How many folks would you, okay, I'm not a murderer, that's not in me. How many folks would you have slapped by now? If you couldn't catch an assault case, how many? You, you just, you, you in church, just like, you know, Thank God for, for law enforcement, because right now I was just, just, just. And, and you know, you know, it, it, it's, it's hatred when you want to rear back. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what rear back meant till I grew up, you know, because there's some folk you, you want to pack, but you, you know, some you want to go because you wicked. You are, you are. How, how many times have you been in the store and saw what you wanted, but wasn't going to pay the price? That they was asking, but you wanted it, and if if you didn't already have two strikes, <laughs> if you you would have went ahead and just you know <laughs> picked up the, the new purse and put your old purse down <laughs> because you wicked. Who was that? Somebody was telling me not too long ago a joke about uh, what was that you guy who went rented a car? Yeah, because he got bad tires on his car. And he's going to take his rental car and switch the tires out and take the, that's just wicked. And five of you been like, that's what I need to do. You wicked. You, you, need, you need policing. You, 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 you need somebody to keep you in order. Look, look at all the light bulbs. Ding, ding. That's genius. I've been riding these ball tires going five miles an hour in the rain. I could have had me some new tires. Courtesy of enterprise, you wicked. And so law enforcement is to produce order. If you could do whatever you want to do, you would do it. I hear some of you lying to yourself saying, no, I wouldn't because I love God. And my love for God is what keeps me committed. And you know you're lying because you love him and you're not committed. See, look, look, look. see how, how see, see, 
Here it is. Here it is. This is what I heard God say. God established the law through Moses, but he needed someone else to enforce it. God can give you the law and what is best for you, but he cannot trust you to do what's best for you. Yep, that was it. God can't trust you to do what's best for you. It sounds like I'm preaching at you. God can't trust me to do what God can't trust us to do what's best for us. Here's the meat of the matter. So God knows that we don't comply due to commitment, but we comply. You want to know how I know? Because we look for ways to sin safely. It's not because I'm committed to God. It's because I don't like anybody else in here real enough. So I just don't like consequences. And if I knew there would be no consequence to my actions, I would still be doing it. I would still be drinking Hennessy. But I know that they say these pills and Hennessy don't go well together. And so to avoid consequences. Are y'all with me? I know. I, I just this is the this is the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the, the word of the Lord today. And so He has given us law enforcement officers because He knows we will not comply because we love Him, but we will comply with consequences. Those of us who still got good sense, because there are some fools who say I can do ten years on my head. <laughs> Why would you want to? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> some of us don't even have enough sense to avoid consequences anymore. Help me, Holy Ghost. Can you imagine how, we, how messed up the world would be without cops? I was uh, uh, at uh, when David Joseph was shot by a police officer. And, and I'm going to throw this in here parenthetically. Um, I want us to be prayerful and mindful in this season. Y'all know I don't do politics. So I don't get into that. I'm just going to tell you what I believe the Lord said to me concerning this. Be, let's be careful. Let's be careful about trying to allow uh, the powers that be to blow up this circumstance. This is why, because uh, cops have been killing black men at a high rate for a minute now. And now all of a sudden, we want national attention for this. Why? Because if you can show a black cop shooting a black kid, then now all of a sudden these things are not racial. You got a game, got to recognize game. You, you, you got to understand. And so here it is. Uh, when, when David Joseph was, was shot, there was a kind of community meeting called. It was at a church, but it was not for a church. There were people of all faiths and all nationalities there. And then the Officers Justice Coalition, they were making a list of the things that this group wanted to go demand from the city in light of this shooting. They wanted the officer's job. They wanted, you know, I guess the little vest cams and all this stuff. So there's a list. And then this one guy, he says, well, I think uh, that we should demand that the police force be disbanded. And, and in a room, you know, maybe 200 people, there was this collective Everybody was making their, their list of demands. Everybody had their thoughts about what we should demand from the city. But this guy says, get rid of the police. And everybody said, <laughs> because people of all nationalities, all races, all ages understood it is absurd to think that there could be preserved order in the world without those who have been deputized and given authority. Are y'all with me? Here it is. And not only do they uh, eliminate chaos, but they encourage correct behavior. Police make you get right, make you do the right thing. He, he says that these uh, authorities are here to help you do right. You ain't even got to be afraid of them. You ain't even got to be afraid of them. <laughs> it sounded cooler in my head before I said it. Then it just sounded unintelligent. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so at the end of the day, he says, if you're doing the right thing, you'll be commended. That they, they, they supposedly encourage proper behavior. So much so that you can be driving, you know, your car, your, your seat leaned all the way into the back seat. Y'all know how we drive. It's, don't let your car be clean, too. If it's clean and the sun is shining, it's 76 degrees. Oh, we're going to roll. You know what I'm saying? Ain't got nowhere to go. Just a fourth of tank of gas. But we rolling. <laughs> all the way. 
music blaring, and I mean, you on that gangster link, gripping crane. Y'all know how we do in Texas. But let the cop pull up beside you. You up at 10 and 2. <laughs> Your seat's still laid back, but you. <laughs> you sitting up right. You, make, you making sure everybody, y'all be quiet. It's a cop. They, what? <laughs> I'm in the back seat. <laughs> They make you get right so much so that you make sure your seatbelt is on. And what is it about the cop rolling up? You turn the radio all the way down. Your windows is up. They windows is up. But you turn the radio. You turn it to gospel music. Now it's Kirk Franklin. It was Fetty Wap. But now you listening to Stomp. I mean, old Kirk. Back in while we sing Kirk. Because you ain't, try, you ain't trying to go to jail. Not today. And so they encourage you to. Fly right. Anybody ever been driving down the highway and you wasn't even speeding, but you saw a cop car and slowed down? <laughs> you say, wait a minute. I think, you know what, y'all speed limits is too high out here. They too high. <laughs> that was classic, Bob. Somebody's gonna catch that in the car and be like, oh, the speed limit is too high. <laughs> here it is. Verse 4, he says, there's no need to trip if you ain't wrong. But, there's a but, if you are in the wrong, you need to understand that that sword is there for a reason. Now, our cops don't have swords. So you understand to contemporize this, we talking about the gun, the Glock, whatever it is. The taser, the pepper spray, the billy club, all of that. It's not there for no, it's not a part of the uniform. It's not decoration. It's there for discipline. It's there to keep order. It's there that just in case you ever get out of line, they have some instruments to help you get yourself back in line. Now, I'm glad that the police have weapons because the criminals, have weapons. Now, I don't want my cops showing up to a gunfight with a switchblade. <laughs> you have the right to remain silent, sir. Let me tell you something about you. All right, so, so here it is. At the end of the day, you need to understand that discipline is a part of their job. The problem I have with the text is that there's a promise made. If you are right, you don't have to worry about the sword. That's what it says. Now, I need us to have a real conversation right here. Some have suffered the sword because they were not completely innocent. I don't know what it is about people, especially in the African-American community. We make everybody dead a saint. Everybody who's ever died is perfect. And they can live a hellish life. Right? You ever been sitting at a funeral and they was giving these remarks and you was like, Uncle Henry? <laughs> Y'all buried him in Travis County issued clothes. <laughs> I don't even have no Uncle Henry, so I... But at the end of the day, we need to quit making guilty people innocent. Stop making saints in the sin. If you jacked up, say you jacked up. Yeah, yeah. And so what happens is we've seen cops shoot these people, and this is what God said in my ear. Perhaps their crime was not worthy of death, but we must acknowledge when mischief contributes to manslaughter. There have been some people who died and did not deserve to die, but it ain't like they wasn't doing nothing. I'm, I'm just trying to do my job. That's all I'm trying to do today. And so what happens is we have armed our young people with stupidity. They have no gun, but they have fully loaded foolishness. Woo! And they go out into the world and then they come into these instances where they are engaged with law enforcement officers, ill prepared, don't know how to respect out there because you don't make them respect you at home. Y'all quiet in here. And what happens is they get the talking back and talking fly because you have taught them that they don't have to submit to anybody's authority. And then when the police drag them out the 
or shoot them dead in the street. We want to blame the trigger puller when the reality is if you wouldn't have sent little fool out there acting foolish without discipline, y'all need to say something so I know we still alive. And the problem that I have with contemporary parents is you don't want to take no credit. You so busy trying to be your kid's friend that you make light and fun and laugh and kid at stupid stuff that's going to get them killed. But the way I feel, hate me at home, but you're going to keep coming home. Hate me at home, but I can trust that out there in the world you'll be safe. God did not give me children so I could be their friend. He gave me kids so I can be their father. And it might mean being unpopular. It might mean being hated. It might be being told that I can't understand. But let me tell you this. I would rather you be mad and alive than happy and dead. Somebody ought to talk back to me. So we've got to stop allowing children to go out armed in foolishness and then blaming the police for what happened. They may not be guilty to the point that they get, get what they got, but they were doing something. You know, you out swerving lanes at 2 o'clock in the morning. Tags is bad. You know, yeah, you, you, got, you got an open container in the car, weed up under the seat. Your grandma's pistol under, <laughs> in the glove box. And the police pull you over. You talking about what you put, y'all always messing with me. Well, sir, sir, when you rolled down the window, a cloud came out the window. It's because I'm black. No, it's because you high. <laughs> and at some point, you've got to be responsible. There it is, that responsible ethics piece. You've got to be responsible enough to say, if I don't want to go to jail, I should stop doing jail-bound stuff. <laughs> at some point, i got to make a change. If I can't get a job and they keep on telling me it's because of the way I'm dressed, I've got a decision to make. Either I keep dressing the way I dress or I stay unemployed or, you know, you got it. But you got to make a choice. You quit talking about they don't want to give me a job. No, you don't want to get one. At least not bad enough to make it. Now, here it is. My struggle is that the text promises me that if I do right, I ain't got to be afraid of the sword. Problem is life has taught me that I can be doing right and still be a victim of abused power. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Why? Because just like I have the liberty to hear the word and do my own thing, so do these authorities. Yes, sir. And some of them have chosen to operate with no integrity, yes, to use their badge to advance personal agendas. So here's the third piece. Law enforcement is ordained by God. Law enforcement is to produce the order of God. Thirdly, law enforcement, I want you to get this, is still obligated to God. That there are some people who don't even know or don't believe that God is. But at the end of the day, they are accountable to him. Because you are in a servant's role, a civil servant. You have been ordained by God for this work. And if you abuse it, taking bribes, if you abuse it, using your badge to manipulate people, to, 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 to rape women, you say something about it, there's going to be a price to pay. Th this kind of stuff goes on in the world. And they're not understanding that there is a God, watch this, who sees all of it. <laughs> there are some things that are left to estimation because it's off the dash cam. Oh, God. But the problem is when the camera can't catch it, God still saw it. Y'all not talking back to me. And so it is frustrating in a world where uh, c uh, cops can beat Rodney King half senseless and then get off. And Michael Brown can be shot from, you know, many feet away. And cops can choke Eric Garner and there be no consequence. But what I do know is that God sees 
everything. And so in Austin, we've got a police monitor. They're supposed to monitor the actions of the police. But how you going to monitor and you're not there? At the end of the day, I need to know that my God is omnipresent. And so those that he has given authority, he is policing them. He is responsible. And this principle doesn't only apply to cops. It applies to anybody who has any type of legal office or responsibility to the people of God, that God is watching. Now, just like God is watching them, God is watching you. He's watching how you respond to that authority, how you respect and honor those that he has esteemed and set in place. And I know you say, well, right now, you know, cops are doing whatever, and the world is yada, yada, yada. And what I hear God saying is I don't care what the world is doing. The church has a different responsibility. At what point does the church decide that we are different? We live by the word of God. So, so church folk can't be cop killers. Matter of fact, church folk should not be bashing cops. I just read the Bible. We, we, we belong to God. There's uh, the comedian Sinbad. I'm closing. The comedian Sinbad, um, he had one, I think it was like Afros and Bell Bottoms, where he said, you know, you kids get in trouble and they come in and um, the parents was fussing at them. And he was like, well, everybody was doing it. And he said, hey, hey. I ain't worried about your friends. <laughs> ain't worried about I said, man, my mama is just like that. <clears throat> One day my mama came to the school. She was always threatening. She was going to whoop me at school. That she was always talking about it never happened. I'm a G like that. But she always said, you know what? You did whoop me at school. But it was like on the parking lot. Look, look. She wasn't. He lying. He lying in church. <laughs> you know, my bad. I forgot. It wasn't in the classroom. It was on the parking lot. She would always make these threats. And I would always, you know, do the whole, well, you know, everybody was talking. Because that was my thing, talking. <laughs> Anybody else? You you know, it was a studio gangster. Like, I wasn't doing real stuff. <laughs> I'm just talking. <laughs> Ain't nothing like being in ISS. That's what it was called back then. In ISS with people who didn't fault the teacher, brought weed to school, you know, got a gun in their locker, and you in here because you was talking. <laughs> Woo! But my mama would always say, listen, I don't care what they do. You belong to me. And I, that's what I hear God saying. We too often allow the world to dictate our conduct. And God said, I don't care what the world does. You're mine. You have my stamp on your life. Stand to your feet. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for this encounter. Thank you for your word. Very tough word for some of us. Challenges our perspectives and maybe even causes us to repent some from some past behaviors and thoughts. But God, your word never fails. It is relevant. It's right. And because we believe that, we seek to live by it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for law enforcement officers and lawmakers and those who are elected officials of any way. I pray, Lord God, that you would allow your hand to be on their lives and cause them to operate in integrity. I pray that you would protect and keep them as they seek to protect and serve. Lord, we live in very dangerous times. Very dangerous times very dangerous times and so God we thank you that in your providential wisdom you gave us a system to keep order in the world and Lord God in the name of Jesus we've preached a message that is not very uh, Jesus 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 but there may be someone here today that needs a relationship with Jesus and Jesus is always our focal point so I pray in the name of Jesus by the Holy Ghost of God that you would illuminate that truth in their heart and draw them to the foot of Calvary in Jesus name we pray listen uh, while your heads are still bowed eyes are still closed I want to ask a real question if you're not sure that if you were to die today you would go to heaven to be with God if you've never asked the Lord to come and live in your heart as your Savior if that's you raise your hand don't be ashamed Nobody. The world waits.
waits for a miracle. The heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. A child prays for peace on earth, and she's calling out from the of her. for a miracle the heart longs for a little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel a child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of hurt oh come oh come
for a little bit of hope Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel The child prays for peace on earth And she's calling out from a sea of hurt Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of her